If you've been producing music for a while, you probably have a goal to go full time with it. Being able to pay your bills by working on music is a dream that we almost all share. And while it can feel far off, it's something that can be achieved with the right plan and some good old fashioned hard work. If you're new here, my name is Adam and I'm a producer and songwriter. I spent around a decade working full time running a commercial studio and now I work from home producing artists and making music for TV and film. If you're not new, then welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. So let's get into it starting with step one. So first up, you need to post about your work online. But don't just post, does anyone want studio time over and over? You need to find creative ways to share your skills that don't involve just asking if people want to work. Here's an example. If on Monday, you post a video snippet of a fire song that you're working on, on Wednesday, a written post talking about something cool that you started adding to your production process, say a new technique you've been working on. Then on Thursday, a photo of you in the studio with an artist. And then on Friday, I have some time to produce a single between these dates, who wants to work together? You'll get way more traction than if you post looking for artists to produce. Send me an email or a DM to get started on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Being smart about how you present yourself online is key and it is a big part of the next habit, so you'll understand why in a minute. If I go to your page and it's hard for me to tell what you do and how good you are at it in just a few minutes, chances are you are missing out on work. I hire a lot of musicians for session work and for live gigs, and I always think of the people who are posting videos of their playing and sharing setup pics from their gigs. There have been times where I've had to post looking for a drummer for this gig, and when I go to the pages of people who reply, you wouldn't even know that half of them play music. Odds are, I'm hiring one of the people who has samples of their work that are easy to find. In the same vein, if a complete stranger posted who is a good music producer, and a friend of yours tagged you in that post, you wanna make sure that the person coming to your page would see it and think to themselves, oh yeah, that is a good music producer, I'll hit them up. So step two, you need to build a network and keep in touch with people and you need to be nice and friendly. I can't tell you the number of times I've heard people in the music business complain because somebody only got the job because they're friends with the artist. This kind of mindset can be super toxic. Having a cynical outlook on how other people get their gigs is a waste of your emotional energy, and a lot of times it's driven by ego or insecurity. If you're real with yourself for a second, you have to admit that it makes sense that most artists would want to work with people that they like spending time with. The good news is, if people mostly want to hire their friends, there's no rule saying that you can't become friends with more people, which will ultimately lead to more work. What I'm not saying you should do is go out and pretend to be friends with a bunch of people so that they'll hire you. But I am saying that you should be friendly and inviting to people that you meet and make an effort to keep in touch with them. Here's what that looks like to me. If you meet an artist that you think would be good to work with, don't just tell them about your studio and your productions all night and then get their email address so you can pitch them your services. Talk to them about what they're doing. Let them tell you all about their art and ask them if you can follow them. Get their Instagram and hit follow, and 90% of the time, they'll follow you back and lurk your page. If you've followed step one, this new potential artist will know everything you want them to know about your production without you having to talk their ear off about what you do all night long. From there, treat them like an actual person instead of someone that you're trying to sell beats to every day. A lot of people just starting in the music business will just treat people like someone they want to sell to but it's way better to treat everyone like a homie and then let them come to you when they're ready to work. If they post something you think is funny or interesting, let them know. If you wanna invite them to a show or to grab a coffee sometime, do it and treat them like a friend. Talk to them about what you're working on, ask for feedback on music you're making, basically just be friends with people in the business. If you do this for long enough, A, you'll actually have a lot of new friends that you enjoy talking to and spending time with, and B, they will hire you to work on music if your work is actually good, and C, they will refer you to their friends. And speaking of referring people, number three is actually all about referring work to other people. Once you've started making more friends in your scene, you'll have opportunities to connect them and refer them to each other. Helping people make connections, getting them gigs, whether that's setting them up with live shows or in the studio, or just tagging someone when you see an opportunity come up, all of that goes a long way towards building reciprocity. If someone helps me out with an opportunity, then it's only natural that I would wanna help them out too. That works in reverse as well, but it's important to do this without expectation. 
You can't just expect that if you hook someone up with some work, that they'll get you the same amount of work in return. However, I've worked with tons and tons of artists who much later on told me that they only hired me because a friend of mine recommended me. These three steps are the path to getting more clients to work with you, but we're here to talk about going full-time, right? So let's dig into ways that you can quit your day job sooner. So number four is going to be getting your budget in order. I often think about one of the very first artists that I produced back in 2010. He was a super talented singer and songwriter, and he was gigging a few nights a week while he worked at a grocery store. We had a couple of conversations about money, and I realized that he literally had no idea how much he was spending week to week compared to what he was making at his job and at his gigs. We did some quick napkin math and figured out that if he was able to spend a little less fun money every week, he could quit his grocery store job and pick up more music gigs. And that would free up his time to write more and start scaling his music business to get better gigs. He quit his job within a couple months of that conversation and he's been a full-time performer ever since. Obviously, not everyone is in the position to quit their job right now to focus on production, but in the same way that this musician was closer than he realized to becoming a full-time artist, a lot of producers I know don't really have a budget, don't track their finances that well, and don't really know how many songs they'd have to produce in a month to replace their job's income. If you're someone who wants to leave their job to produce full-time, I'd suggest paring down your spending so you can make that jump sooner. I'm not saying that you should skip meals or beat yourself up about buying a movie ticket here and again, but take a look at your bank statements and see what you can do to get your expenses down. Now we can focus on making more time and money for yourself. Oftentimes, that means picking up a flexible, music-related side hustle. Most producers that are just starting out can't sustain themselves solely by producing artists, so we'll pick up some side gigs. I've got a whole video about the best side hustles for producers that I'll link in the pinned comment so you can watch it after this. Now, I know what you're thinking. If I need to get a side hustle, I might as well just keep my job that I have now. And yes, for some people, that's the best option. But there are some perks to having a side hustle that are really important. First off, you need a flexible schedule to be a full-time producer. If you're never free to record because you're at your job from nine to five every day, it's gonna be borderline impossible to get clients. Sometimes the best ability is availability, and a lot of musicians gig in the evenings, meaning they're looking to record in the mornings and afternoons. Second, having a music-related side hustle is huge for networking. If you're doing gigs yourself or running sound, you'll be meeting musicians way more often than if you work at a restaurant or in retail. So if you're following along with these steps, eventually you'll be working with more and more artists. Once you've got some production gigs flowing your way, let's talk about the steps to keep that positive momentum going. So number six is going to be developing systems and workflows to maximize your creative time. If you're managing yourself, doing all the production, all the client outreach, promotion, and trying to have a personal life, you need to have systems in place to make sure that things don't get missed. When I first started producing, there were so many times that I lost work because I didn't follow up with someone's email, or I told someone in person that I would get them a quote only to forget when I got home. And there were times when I forgot to send someone an updated version of their song after they sent mix notes because I just didn't have good systems in place. I'm working on a script for a much longer video about systems that you can put in place to manage yourself as a producer. So subscribe if you wanna see that when it comes out. But to sum it up quickly, you need to have good calendar systems in place, a good invoicing and billing system, productivity and to-do list set up, and good communication practices with your artists. Once you've got these systems in place, the last steps to becoming full-time are to charge more and to do more of what makes you more money. The first one, charge more, is pretty obvious. Naturally, there's a limit to how many songs you can produce in a month. So once you're getting steady work, start charging more quickly. If you want a grandfather in your artists that have been working with you for a while, that's fair, but otherwise you need to get those rates up. The second part, doing more of what makes you more, is going to take some trial and error. For example, as a producer first and foremost, let's say you can charge $800 for a production, but to do the mix and the master, you would only get another 200 bucks. So that means that you are now working on that song for maybe an extra week between doing the mix and handling revisions. If you refer it out to a mixer and a mastering engineer, 
you can just dive headfirst into that next $800 project. On the other hand, maybe you're better and faster at mixing, and you can command more dollars per hour spent working if you just do mixes. This is something that will take some trial and error, as well as lots of self-reflection, but it can be a big move towards going full-time. So once you've got rates set, you're working with more and more artists and saving up money, it's time to start the next step. And that next step is building your buffer. So if you combine the money that you're making producing with the money that you're making with your day job or with your side hustle, you should be able to save up a decent little parachute that will allow you to take the leap of faith and leave your job behind. You'll probably be brown bagging it for a bit and you'll probably have not a lot of free time, but after a while, you'll be making enough money from producing that it is actually costing you money to clock into work. Once you've hit that sweet spot, then you'll know that it is time to take the leap. So we've covered some good business habits to help you get to full time, but none of that matters if your actual productions are not fire. So this video right here will help you level up your music production game.